So I'll be going over how to make a basic front-end HTML CSS JavaScript page. Um, so you guys will be making a Adopt a Furball app. And what this front-end does is as a form where you can put a pet name. Um, so Buddy, and you click Adopt a Furball, it makes a post request to a server I've set up and it returns you back with a Buddy. And this guy is a kitten who is three months old and it gets the picture of the cat and it says, please take extra good care of this good old guy because he is very young. Um, so this is hitting my server that I've set up on adoptafurball.herokuapp.com. Um, so if you post a name to it and it will return you back with the name, the type of animal, a picture, so this goes to the URL where the picture is at, and then an age. And you guys have set up a server in warm-up part one to take in a user and password, and then it would return back an error code uh, and account. So now I'm just going to teach you guys how to make the front end of this um, hitting your warm-up server. Um, but in this example, I'll be hitting the adopt a furball app server. So let's just start by creating a blank HTML page. This will be a single page app, um, although I'm not going to use a front end MVC framework. It's just all going to be in one page, loading um, both this first form screen and just uh, adding onto the screen when I hit the button, rather than uh, if you notice, it didn't refresh the whole page because I'm just getting back the JSON um, from my server and just taking the information to update parts of the page rather than hitting my server and my server returns me a whole new HTML page, which is what server-side generation is. Uh, so go ahead and just save a blank um, HTML page. I'm just going to call it index.html and save it onto my desktop. And then, so HTML is just the, it just defines what the layout of the page is and what items are on the page. Uh, so to define a HTML page, you start with the HTML tag. And inside the HTML tag, there is a head and a body. So head contains all the links to your scripts uh, and CSS. Or um, you can also have metadata inside to specify what is the title that you see on this tab or uh, metadata describing the page, but it doesn't actually show anything from the head when you see the page itself. Uh, so whatever you want to show to the user it has to go inside the body tag. Um, so for us, inside our body tag, we want to show a form with a pet name a text field and a button to submit the form as well as a label. So let's go ahead and create um, one container, so there's divs inside HTML. Um, divs are just containers to hold elements. They don't, they don't show anything. So if I um, go ahead and drag my index.html into my browser, and right now if you right click inspect element, um, you'll see my body, I have my div in there, but it doesn't show anything. It's just, a, it's just an empty container. Um, so let's name the div. This one is going to have our adopt adopt screen, so I'll just call it my adopt screen, my adopt screen container. And this one is uh, going to hold the form and the button. Uh, we'll also have another screen. After I click, I want to show all this information, so I'm just going to give it another div for to hold that stuff. And I'm just going to give it an ID of pet screen. And make sure you close every single HTML tag. It starts with um, the bracket, or not bracket, the caret, the name of the tag, and then the same name but with a slash in front. And that closes the tag. So inside our adopt screen, we want to have a form. So HTML has an element called form. And inside your form, you want a input. Input, if you put type text, 
that will give you a text field and we also want a uh, submit button so that you can use input type submit and if you go to our page refresh it there's your text fields uh, which is inside form input we have a type text and the submit button all right and we also let's add a label as well um, so label and let's say uh, name your new buddy and so if you notice um, if I if I click on this it doesn't um, automatically highlight my field uh, but this label is for this field so if you want the user to be able to click on the label and just highlight your input directly um, you can use the for attribute so these are attributes for your tag so for is an attribute of label type is an attribute of input um, so for and you want to match it with the with the inputs id um, so let's say this is for a pet name and then in here if you put id and you match exactly the text you type pet name then now when i refresh and i click on that label, it'll automatically bring my, my cursor into the input. And if you notice in my app here, it has pet name by default. And if I start typing, it just goes away. So that's called a placeholder. So you can use the placeholder attribute on your input. So placeholder, and let's just say pet name. And now it will have Oh, misspelled it, placeholder, uh, pet name in here, and when you start typing, it goes away. So cool, so we have a basic form. Um, when I click submit, it doesn't really do anything, it just refreshes the page right now, actually. Um, so let's go ahead and create, um, let's finish creating the basic HTML for our page. So inside pet screen, what do we want to show? We want to show um, the name and also a, a paragraph about his information and please take care of this little guy if he's less than six months old and if he's if I hit a guy who's older uh, older than oh they're also young okay so this guy's older than six months old and then we we change out the text to say this guy's old enough to ramble on his own. This is a huge kitten. And all right, so first let's start by creating the name. Um, so let's use a H1 tag. So job, um, HTML has headers. So H1, H2, H3, all the way through H6. And H1 is just the largest header. Um, and you can use headers. You can also put like regular paragraphs of text and just style it larger but usually you want to use an h1 tag to specify hey this is a heading this is a title of a section um, that way screen readers who are blind they can um, they can be told that this is actually a title rather than just text so you're specifying what type of element or what type of data is it uh, so let's give the name or id and this is going to be the name Actually, let's not use an ID, let's use a class. So class is also for naming HTML elements, but um, classes are repeatable, whereas ID has to be unique. So there should only be one page screen on this entire page because it's ID pet screen. Um, but I'll be giving the name, just assign it to a class because we might, let's say if we're showing a page where we adopted 10 pets, we want to be able to repeat this class 10 times and not have it conflict, so we'll use a class for things that can be repeated. All right, so in the paragraph, this is going to be uh, this paragraph over here. And let's say uh, class, and it's just going to be info. He's a blank who is blank months old. OK, and later on, we'll be using JavaScript to uh, fill in how uh, how old he is and what type of animal he is 
And the way we want to do that is um, let's use HTML elements so that we can select. Um, so you can actually select this element and replace its text. So I'm going to use the span element because span is usually for uh, elements that are inside a sentence that you want to go in line with the sentence. And let's just give that a class of animal. So that's going to be the animal type who is blank months old. Let's give that another span and a class of age. All right, so now we can leave that blank and we'll fill it in with uh, JavaScript once we get back data from our server. Um, let's also have a paragraph for the warning. And the last thing we want to include is an image tag. So for the image, you'll have to use the IMG tag and the source is where the URL goes. But um, our server, well, I set up the server to return you a URL. If you remember, it sends you the picture URL. So we'll just leave it blank for now and fill it in with JavaScript. So now we actually already completed the HTML, which specifies what we have on the page. Um, HTML is just literally what do you show on the page. You can't actually react to users submitting the form uh, or doing anything when they click. That's handled by JavaScript. So let's add some JavaScript to our page. So first, we are going to actually use the jQuery library, which is built on top of JavaScript, um, but it just lets you write JavaScript easier. So first, include jQuery inside the head. So remember I told you the head is where the script and the CSS and the metadata goes. So we're going to use, uh, instead of downloading and hosting our own jQuery file, let's just use uh, jQuery hosted by Google. And we can just load in the library that they're hosting when our page loads. Um, so just go click on jQuery and grab the second snippet down here. Uh, that's the latest jQuery version and just drop it inside our head. And because we are just loading this file locally here, um, we want to make sure to add an HTTP. Otherwise, it tries to take the protocol of our, of our current page and it can't find it because it's just a file on our desktop. Uh, if you were hosting it on your server on Heroku, then it will just use the HTTP protocol that Heroku is using. Okay, so now we've loaded jQuery on our page. Um, the other thing, so now we can start writing our own scripts to actually handle things such as clicking or um, user focusing on an input or maybe the user scrolling. You can detect any sort of user interaction on the browser with JavaScript. So we want to detect clicking on the submit button. Um, so the way we do that is with jQuery, it always starts with a dollar sign. And you can select your button down here. Um, let's just give this guy an ID so it makes it easier to select. And let's call it adopt button. And to select things by ID, you do hash and then the name of the ID. So this is a dot button. So when I click on the button, um, this just selects the actual element in the HTML or the DOM. So you can see by going to, if you right click inspect element, this brings up this uh, developer window and go to console and just paste in uh, jQuery adopt button and I think I haven't saved and loaded jQuery. So let me refresh and do the same thing. And this now grabs you this input button. So we selected the button, but we want to attach a click handler. Um, so if you do dot click, it's a, job, a jQuery method that basically says, I am going to watch for any sort of clicking um, event on the adopt button, and I will handle that event by running this function that I pass in. Um, so every time a user clicks on it, it runs this function that you've, you've defined here. 
and the function takes in the event itself uh, and then it runs whatever JavaScript you put. So when I click on the button, I want to grab the name that the user have typed in here and send it off in a post request. So to grab the name from this input, uh, same thing using jQuery, and you can grab this by its ID. Uh, so hashtag pet name, and then there's a dot val method to grab the value of whatever the user has typed. So we can again see that here. Uh, I've typed in hello guys, and if I put it down here, pet name dot val, and it'll say hello guys. So we want to grab the value. Let's save it into a variable so we can send it off to the server. So var, uh, let's call it name. And then now it'll assign the name to the variable. And um, let's just do console.log name. Console.log is the same as um, like Python's print or Ruby's p. It just prints directly to this console here. And if I go ahead and refresh, uh, refresh the page and I say pet name equals Ruby and I submit if you notice it actually didn't log it um, and if you I'll show you why so there's two things um, one the click handler can only be attached to the button once the button and everything in the HTML has actually finished loading um, so what we want to do is specify um, for it to actually run this only when the page has loaded, the scripts in the head tag has loaded, um, and the DOM is ready to be binded to events. Um, and we do that by saying document.ready. And then we pass in a function, it's just the blink function, and run this code once the document is actually ready. All right, so this actually still won't work, but it will wait until the document has finished loading the scripts, um, any CSS, you include a head tag, and the actual HTML in the body. And, um, well, here, I'll show you why. If I submit, it actually is refreshing the page, um, and that is because we've included this form element and by default the form element just um, does a get request to itself if you didn't specify where to go so for example if you said action equals um, HTTP www.google.com it will do a get request to google.com and if you don't specify the action it just does a get request to itself when you hit submit uh, so now if I refresh and I hit submit, then it will uh, submit and go to google.com. Uh, if you really wanted to, you can also specify the method of post, and instead when I hit the button again, it will try to post to google.com, but google.com doesn't actually accept posts, and it says four or five, it's an error. Uh, post is not, in, it's inappropriate. So what we actually want to do is stop the form from doing the default um, action of posting, or, or in this case, uh, getting the page. And to do that, we can just do e dot prevent default, and that just stops uh, the default posting. And now, if I click submit again, it won't post. And get rid of this part, um, and. It should actually log the name now, so I'm going to get me as a pet, and it logged Karina there. Cool, so instead of just printing out the name, we actually want to send off the name and hit our adopt a furball website. So how do we send that off? To do a uh, post or get request, you can use jQuery's.ajax method, and uh, Ajax takes in an object that has the um, all the information for doing a request, HTTP request. So first you put in the type and you say you want to do a post request. Um, make sure you put a comma after each, each uh, key value. And we also want to specify the URL, which I've set up to be uh, adopt a furball 
app.herokuapp, herokuapp.com. And it's going to be on the path slash adopt. We also want to specify the data we're passing in. So what are we going to pass in? We want to pass in the name and the string for the actual name. So that will be name. And the string for the name, we've saved into this variable name. So we can just pass in name. The other thing we want to do for data is it has to be a string when we pass it in. Um, so just use the JSON library dot stringify and stringify will take in the whole object as a parameter. So close that off comma and then next we can define the content type. So the content type is what type of data are we sending to uh, adopt a furball server and that is application JSON and the data type, we can specify that to be uh, JSON. And data type is what we expect back from the server. And I will send you back JSON as well. The last thing is, what do we want to do on success? So when my server returns back with the status 200 OK and I send back data, what do you actually want to do with that data? So now we can say, um, we provide a um, function, which is the callback function of what do we run when I get back the data from the server. So it takes in data, uh, which is this data here that my server returns back to you. And then it can run this function. And you can do stuff with the data you just got back. Um, so let's just print out the data for now so we can see what it's getting back. Make sure you close this and your function definitions and your variable definitions with semicolons. OK, so now if we go back to our index, refresh, uh, to mocha, submit, it should return back. And now this is the what the server returned back. And I did a console log on the data. So now you see here it has a name, the animal type, the picture, and the age. Um, but it's not actually updating anything yet, so let's update the page with the information we just got back. So how do we do that? So let's select um, this guy here. So we want to select the, the name, the header with the class name. And to do that, in, for selecting IDs, we use hash. For selecting classes, we use dot. So we can do dot name and there's a method uh, for jQuery.html, and you're allowed to pass in uh, any string or any HTML um, through here, and it'll replace, it'll find uh, whatever has class name and replace everything that's inside of the header. So if you had a string in here, if you had um, an image inside of here, it'll just replace the whole inside with whatever you pass in over here. So we want to replace it with the data's um, name. And it's just like a dictionary. So you can grab it with bracket. And you can say name. Um, or the other way you can do it is just the dot notation, kind of like Ruby or um, Java. You can do dot name. And it'll grab you the name. So let's refresh. Uh, node submit and here we have replaced the headers insides with the name. So let's also replace the animal type uh, and the months and it's really similar. Um, we can just do dot animal dot html and replace it with data and we get back the animal and then we also have age so let's grab those so animal and then similar thing age data dot age let's do sassy submit so sassy is a kitten who is 10 months old and uh, another way to select items so this means it finds every single element with class name and replace it. So if I had 
a name up here, um, and this one was a div or anything, it could be any element, it just has to have class name on it, uh, it would um, replace this guy as well. So if I put uh, foo and submit, and it replaces this guy and that guy. So just anything with name, it will replace. Uh, but if we wanted to just replace the name inside the pet screen, then we can specify, um, we want to select the pet screen and then look inside of the pet screen for anything class name and only replace that. So if I replace again um, and I do rails submit, then it'll only replace this header and not the other guy because it looks for the name inside a pet screen. All right, so let's get rid of that. And uh, okay. So the other thing we want to do is show the image. And the image right now is source. So we actually want to replace the attributes value. We don't want to replace the HTML. There's, there's no HTML inside of the element. Um, so we want to grab the attributes and replace the inside of the attribute. So we can do that by first grabbing the image. Um, in this case, we didn't assign an ID or class, but we can still select it. Uh, in this case, we can do pet screen. So we want to look inside the pet screen for an image. And now we're selecting by tag instead of by class or ID. So the image, and we want to replace the source. So source is an attribute, so you can do atter and then source. So if you just did pass in uh, one um, argument, and let's just run it to see what it returns. It actually returns nothing, but let me show you a better example. So if I had um, picture URL in here, refresh, and then I called that, so it returns the value that I've had. But if you pass in a second argument, and you say data.picture, which if you remember, um, if you remember the picture right here is the URL. So I'm grabbing the picture URL and replacing the source. And if I go ahead and refresh here, um, and I pass in um, happy, happy is a kitten who is really big. Uh, let's try again. There you go. Smaller kitten, wolf kitten. Okay, so now we learned how to get data from a form, post it off to a server, get data back, and then change stuff on the page. Um, and what else do we want to handle? So if you notice, if he is Older than, um, older than six months old, then I'll say this guy is old enough to ramble on his own. So let's do some if logic. You can do that in JavaScript um, by saying if, and we're grabbing the data.age is less than six, then we want to select this warning paragraph and throw some warning text in there. Uh, so to select it, it's class warning, so dot warning, or you can do uh, the warning inside the pet screen by specifying pet screen space dot warning uh, dot html and let's just pass in um, the warning of um, please take care of this little guy and else if he's older than six then um, instead I'm just gonna say This guy is old enough to roam on his own. And just end your functions. OK. So now refresh. And uh, this one's going to be called Buddy. Submit. And he's a puppy who's two months old. And he's less than six. So it says, please take care of this little guy. He's sleeping, hopefully not dead. Okay, so we're doing some if logic, but um, 
This page is uh, when you refresh by default, it still shows this um, sentence up here, which we don't want to show until we've actually hit submit. Um, so first we can hide that screen by on page load, we can select the screen and hide it. So how do we select the screen? Uh, jQuery and it's called uh, pet screen. And we can just select the entire pet screen and hide it. And jQuery has a method called hide, which hides the screen. So now it's hidden, um, but it's actually still there in the DOM or the HTML. Uh, DOM is just the, the document object. And if you look inside the body, the pet screen is still there. Um, you can see the CSS being applied on the right. And it says display none. So if you uncheck it, you'll see it on the screen. And if you, um, it basically changes it to display block is its default state or default styling. Um, so what jQuery is doing on hide, when it calls dot hide, it's actually just doing the same thing as if you did um, if you just change the CSS. So you can also change the CSS with uh, JavaScript by doing .css and then passing in the property. So the property is display and the value is block. So we want to do display and to hide it we want to do display none and if we comment this one out it actually just does the same thing and it's hidden but it's still there in the DOM display none. Um, and if you want to show it again, you can use display block or you can just uh, do dot show and that shows it. So first we want to hide it and we want to show it on click. So after they click, we got back the data. We filled in the data into our pet screen and then at the end we can just do dot show. And so now it's hidden until I um, type in its name and there's boo. Okay, great. So now we have a working page. Um, you guys know how to, this is, this. you could use the if statements to handle um, your error cases. So when you return error code of negative one or negative two, um, you can show different messages based off of that, either just by like plain if statements, or you can organize it a better way into modular functions. Um, for example, you can have a function to, to get error message, and then depending on the error code, it returns you the correct error message. Um, but I'm just doing it the simple way. So let's learn a little bit about styling. So as you see here, this page, uh, it's a lot prettier. We have these um, nice pink buttons, it does things on hover, and we also have like these rounded corners for the uh, inputs, whereas and also like this Times New Roman, let's change that. And so you can put your CSS inside your head. Um, usually put it up the, above the scripts, and I'm showing you putting styling on the same and inside the HTML page, but you guys should put it separate into an actual CSS sheet uh, and just include it in the head instead of like typing all of your CSS on the one page. So CSS is really similar to the way JavaScript or jQuery selects things. So they use hash for uh, IDs and dots for selecting things by class. Um, so let's say we want to select um, well, if you want to also select by tag, you just don't just put the tag name. So let's just do um, anything inside the body. So let's change the font for now. So font family, and you can just use um, browser support by default, like around 15 or so fonts. Um, so we can use one of their default fonts, Verdana, which is a sans serif font. And now it's like the, the not Times New Roman. Let's also do some change to the inputs to make it a little prettier and along with the button. Uh, so if you want to do input, this selects every single input on your page. Um, and let's just put a uh, some padding. 
Uh, let's go with five pixels on top, eight pixels on the side, as well as um, let's change the border. Oh, so padding, what padding does is, uh, if I refresh again, if you notice, there's more spacing between the uh, object's border and the text inside of it. So you can also change things on the fly in your browser. It doesn't save to your um, index HTML page, but if you do like 10, then it increases the padding on top. So if I keep increasing it, that's the top padding, and this is the side, the side padding. So the spacing between the border and the text inside of it. And if you want to do um, margin, that is the spacing around the element. So if I did margin 20 pixels, pixel is the way that things are measured in web. And if I refresh, then um, it's hard to see, but if I do more margin, then it spaces around it creates now it's like 34 pixels around this guy so if I hover over this guy the orange um, the orange that you see on the screen there is how much margin it has if I keep increasing margin it just increases I can also do a separate top margin and um, a separate side margin so top value and then side value all right and I don't really want a margin I said let's do a border um, so you can specify the border's width, how do you want it solid or do you want it dotted, um, and the color. So I'll, let's get a, how about a light gray color. So this is hex. Um, colors are usually defined in hex for web. There's also RGBA, um, but you can look up hex. And now it has a nice two pixel border. Um, so let's go ahead and make it rounded. So I like this curvy, curvy border. And you can do that by using border radius. And just specify how many pixels you want on the radius. So that is meaning um, the radius, the bigger you make the radius, the more rounded it gets. And the less radius, if it's zero radius, then it's just back to its square state. And this button looks gray and actually looks like it's disabled, so let's not make it gray. Uh, so we want to select the adopt button. So we can select it, select it in a lot of different ways. So for example, we can say hash uh, adopt button. So this is selecting by ID, and we can say um, background color. And let's make it hot pink. So this is another way. There's like default colors by by the uh, English name, um, and you can look up what browsers support or the hex code. So hot pink is one of the default colors, and now it's hot pink. And let's also give it a border color. Pretty, um, doesn't do anything on hover though so we can go ahead and actually attach a hover with CSS so usually you could also do this with uh, JavaScript to watch a user uh, on hover events but I'm just gonna there's this nice way of just doing colon hover and then you can specify like you want to change the background color to something else so let's change it to a normal pink, and if you refresh, then on hover, the background changes to this pink color, or lighter pink color. We could have also selected the button in a bunch of other ways. Um, so for example, if you want to just um, say every single submit button uh, on your app should look like this hot pink color, then instead of saying the specific ID of the button, which means like if you had five forms on this page or five buttons, um, you don't want to do like hashtag adopt button and then like comma hashtag another button. Uh, so you can just say every single input that is type submit, then that will just take on this uh, hot pink color. So make it more generic so that you can reuse the styling throughout your application. Cool. So basically have a functioning page 
and um, I think that is about it that you guys need to learn for um, your warm-up at least. Um, so I've taught you guys how to create this form and handle submitting, uh, how to get back data, change stuff on the page, show a different part of the page, hide a different part of the page, um, add some styling, make sure you guys do the extra credits, um, and learn some cool ways to make your page look nicer. Um, and so right now, I have uh, I told you guys, like, you should separate out your style and put it into a CSS sheet um, along with your script. So that way your uh, templates, your actual view isn't messed up with the um, scripts and you would just include your scripts like how we included jQuery here. Oh, and we have extra credit for you guys. So lots of opportunities. Some of the stuff I've taught you, um, for example, the CSS stuff, you can use you can use Bootstrap to make it look pretty, but you still have to write your own uh, at least 10 different properties properties meaning like the, the border radius that I've showed you. Uh, so use at least 10 different properties. And if you make it look really cool, for example, if you typed, so by default, it's a Count, Count Necula, it's one of your classmates project. But if you had, it has an Easter egg of if you type George, then George's face pops up saying how much he loves CS169. Uh, swag pops up Kevin's face. Yeah, it doesn't have to be as fancy as this, but this is this would count. This would definitely count for the ten points. Um, you can also do some client side validation. So this one is it should it shouldn't be that hard, but you should just watch for um, different events. So in this case, instead of how I showed you guys to handle uh, on click events, so this one binds um, the click handler to any time someone clicks on the button, but instead of doing uh, clicking on a button, you'd, you'd want to just bind it to be every time I clicked on there, typed in something, and then clicked somewhere else, or that's pretty much blurring the input. Uh, this is focusing the input, blurring the input, and on blur you should do some JavaScript checking, so just bind it to a blur, uh, blur method. Um, if you wanted to do the next one, cookies, um, this one is slightly harder, uh, but you want to basically persist their login so that right now if I um, log in and hopefully it's my password. Now it's invalid. Test one, add user. So if you notice, if I refresh, it just takes me out of there. Um, cookies, you can set a cookie and check that the cookie, if it's there, then don't bring them back to this page. Actually just keep their counts so that they're not actually logged out yet. Um, and then front-end MVC framework. Um, this one is only applicable to People using HTML, CSS, JavaScript, if you're on iOS and Android, there really isn't a MVC framework equivalent. Um, sorry, guys. Uh, but if you use a front-end MVC framework like Angular, Backbone, Knockout, there's a bunch of other ones you can use. Um, it's a really nice way to organize your JavaScript into model view controllers so that uh, your script just isn't clobbered all over the place like this and like grabbing things and replacing their HTML. You can actually bind them to models. Yes, and just make sure you follow how to submit it. And for your peer reviewer, make sure you review them and give them credit um, by following these instructions here. So yeah, try it out and learn some fun stuff, which hopefully will help you in the project. Um, for those of you using Rails, uh, I can show you a little bit about the Rails views. Um, so this is the warm-up. And inside views, I have 
Okay, so this is inside app, and then go to your views folder. Um, and you should probably have a users folder in what there as well, and um, an index page. So I've actually, I've put mine inside home. But uh, you'll just want to handle a get request to your server. So first of all, you want to allow the user to go onto something like the warm-up page, and then it gets the HTML view. Um, so to do a get request, first I'll show you how to route it. You just want to allow a get either to slash or to users, and then direct it to your controller. And in your controller, you can just handle that by, uh, if, if mine is going to animal index, this is actually not my warm-up, it's the adoptafurball.com. And my controller, all it does is show an index page. And it, by default, it renders index because it's called index. And then it'll go into my views and look inside animal because this is the animal controller. And then load up the index on here. So if you notice here, because I'm using Rails and a lot of other MVC um, frameworks will also have um, a default application.html.erb. This guy is your base template. So every single page in your application will use application.html.erb. And all it does is whatever I put inside index or any other HTML view, it will put it where the yield statement is. So it'll include all your head stuff that I showed you earlier. Um, so you guys don't have to put in a head. Uh, it will just take this one is grabbing every single style sheet you've defined and dropping it in the head. This guy takes all your JavaScripts and drops it in the head. Um, so all you have to put inside one view is just the the actual div part. Um, I've included my JavaScript here, but you should really separate it out into and put it in the um, app assets. And then in app assets, there's JavaScript um, and style sheets. So you can include all of those. And when you have your application layout here, it'll just include, right now it's including application. And if you look into application, so go to app assets, um, this one is the style sheet. So it's going to style sheets, application, and application is just doing require tree, which require tree just grabs every single style sheet in your folder here, um, which includes the home, the scaffold, styles, all of this stuff. It will just compile it into one file. Uh, so for example, if you looked at adopter for ball and then inspect element, even though I have a bunch of uh, style sheets in my style sheets folder, it's, it actually compiles it into one. And then in layouts application, it just includes it as one sheet that's compiled. So if you go in the head, and then if you see here, there's just the application.css. And that includes all the CSS I've written in um, like all, all five or so of these files in style sheets. Same with the JavaScript. So you don't have to include, when you make your view, you don't have to include your head tag with all your scripts because it'll automatically include that because it uh, uses the application.html base template. And I think that's it. So you should be able to deploy your application and um, if you if you set the route to have a, a get handler, um, either to slash or maybe slash users, wherever you want to make the user go to see the user sign in page, um, and then they should be able to get to your warm up sign in and start doing some post requests and logging in. All right.